How you doing? Anthony Ferraro here of Create Sci-Fi. Today I'm excited to create a character. We're going to make a custom helmet. Um, I've been doing a lot of Mandalorian builds lately, and the reason for that is one, because it's cool, and two, because Star Wars, right, is the gold standard. For me, anyway, and I think for a lot of people. So by going through the process of making the Mandalorian pieces, especially the helmet, it kind of gets you in the mindset of that design style. And it, and it gets you thinking about how these things were put together. So um, that fulfilled two things for me. It, it, it was just fun to do. And then also um, it kind of got my wheels turning and got me thinking about things in a different way. So my favorite thing is to create worlds, to create characters. So when I was doing um, the one blaster video where I made a holster, I needed a belt and I went to the Goodwill to find an old belt with a buckle. And as always, you know, when you're not looking for things, you find things. So I found this construction helmet and it was just really, not, has this really solid interior. This is always a problem keeping these things on your head. And then even though it's a, a hard helmet, it's got this interesting design element to it. So I thought this would be a good donor piece. So I just picked it up and, and put it aside. Meanwhile, I'm making these Mandalorian helmets. So I think for this, you know, if you cut off the brim and then build it down, you could come up with something interesting. So then on one of my builds, I was using styrene plastic and um, there's a place locally that sells it. I'm in Los Angeles, so I wasn't worried about it. Well, when I went to go pick it up, what I didn't realize is it was like an industrial place. So I needed probably like two 11 by 17 sheets, but I had to buy <laughs> like a six foot sheet. So I have plenty of styrene plastic, right? So, you know, you're looking at the, the Star Wars stuff and you realize in the early days, they were probably building with stuff like that, making the angles. So I thought, okay, I have this styrene plastic, right? I have this helmet, you know, maybe I can make something. So for me, I'm really inspired by uh, 70s sci-fi. I just really like um, the fluidity of it. You know, uh, Star Wars and Star Trek and, you know, more recent things are amazing, but they tend to be very utilitarian where the, the 70s stuff, it just tends to be a little wild, a little more imaginative. Uh, I kind of like a combo of the two, but I usually look to the 70s for inspiration. Um, the other day I was just uh, going down the rabbit hole and for some reason I ended up with George Clinton's P-Funk All-Stars, right? George Clinton, Bootsy Collins. <laughs> it was just this amazing, you know, they're a band from the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So, um, there were some really wild out there costumes. And then I came across this music video called Atomic Dog, right? And then I'm gonna show you a clip right here. And at the end, this guy kind of pops up with this mask on and it's for sure like Star Wars inspired, but it looks like a hard helmet. And then just looking at this, I started grabbing <laughs> screen grabs immediately. Cause I was like, ah, aha. And for sure with this, in the styrene and that image. I don't want to build that helmet, but that gives me like the jumping off place. And I'm like, oh, okay. My head starts to wrap around it, which is so important. So now all day I've been thinking about it. And, and this is kind of how I tend to build. Like today I, I was thinking about it because last night I saw that and today I couldn't get it out of my head. So now <laughs> I have to build this. So. I don't know what this is gonna end up looking like, but we have this helmet, we got our styrene, and we have the P-Funk All-Stars George Clinton inspiration. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yippee. <laughs> All right, let's get to building. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is deal with this hard helmet. Um, what I wanna do is uh, get rid of this brim but I also want to bring it down to a point, uh, kind of want it to uh, shadow or um, mimic uh, the nose, the brow. All right, so I just put some painter's tape on there just to give me a, a straight guideline. And here's my buzzsaw attachment on the Dremel. Love my buzzsaw. 
And um, I'm just going to cut this off into a peak. And now when I'm dealing with this, I realize I got this logo on the back here. So while I got the Dremel out, I'm just gonna put the sanding drum on there and I'm just going to uh, erase that raised text. I probably could sand that off by hand, but since I had the Dremel um, fired up, I got in there with that. So here's my peak, <laughs> it looks kind of like a bird's beak, but um, now we're off to the races. The train has left the station. So now I'm gonna take this poster board and I'm first gonna mock up uh, what I think this faceplate, this front part of what the helmet is going to be. So I got some fold lines, some cut lines, and I know that I want the visor to be this uh, sort of V shape. So that I'm, I'm putting in there in stone, so to speak, but the rest is, is a little fluid at this point. So I'm, I'm cutting, I'm almost in my mind imagining like uh, the face shield of a medieval helmet. I put that on there and now we're, we're in the ballpark. I just realized I got to cut off this big chunk on the cheek, but you know, sometimes it's easier when you're just looking at it, right? Rather than just thinking of it and kind of having hands on. So um, now I'm creeping up on it. And now I got my piece of styrene and I'm going to take that poster board uh, template that I created and I'm just going to trace it out on um, the styrene. And this is why I like to use poster board. You could just use paper or, or butcher paper, but uh, the poster board is a little bit better to deal with when you're making stencils. And now the styrene, as you see there, you just, you know, you just etch it with the knife and it, and it snaps right off. The V I don't cut out yet because I wanna make sure that I get the right shape first before I, I bend that out. And right now I'm just heating up the plastic and I'm using a straight edge just so I can get a nice uh, crisp center line. And I'm just uh, gently working this plastic until I get it to where it fits around this helmet. And now these si side tabs here, I, I have to just heat up so that I can um, bend them around the, the corner there. So now I'm test fitting and um, this is gonna work. Again, you know, I always say this square peg, round hole. We always gotta wrestle with this stuff, but we're getting there. So now I'm going to uh, super glue this on, but then I realize uh, very soon that hot glue is gonna work better for me. So I grab my hot glue gun and uh, the first thing is just getting this uh, face piece to fit and I have it hot glued in there, and now it's starting to take shape. Now I kind of can see where I'm going. Again, this is still a fluid process. Now this, I, I want to be a better fit. So rather than trying to make an exact template, it's always easier and more effective when building like this to sort of overbuild and then trim back, and then you get the illusion that everything was uh, perfectly and uniformly uh, bonded together when it's more just um, uh, subtractive instead of uh, additive. And now for the back, uh, along the back of the head, I'm just gonna put a straight piece back there. Um, so again, with the heat gun, I'm just going to uh, heat this up so that it'll, it'll bend and melt. And then there off camera, I just wrestled that in and <laughs> added some hot glue. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff, you get the idea, so I don't have to show you every second of it. So now I'm gonna build these ear pieces uh, for two reasons. One, to sort of uh, blend the, the back and the front together, and two, just to add a little dimension, a little interest to the profile of the piece. So what I'm doing now is I have these tabs that I'm going to uh, fold over with the straight edge and just uh, create sort of this uh, raised profile. So now I'm going to do that to all four of the edges. And then this way, instead of just putting it flat on the piece, it just gives it um, a nice uh, 3D pop there. And when the head moves around, that'll just be a spot of interest. So now I just put some guidelines where uh, I know I'm gonna be aiming for with my hot glue. And that just makes it easier once you're gluing and pressing things to not have to think about it where you've already decided what you're aiming for. So now um, that's trimmed, but it's not refined, right? So I'm gonna take my Dremel sanding drum and I'm just going to now do the final blending. And what this is gonna do is uh, gonna blend it all together and make it look like it was uh, made out of one piece. So now to add a little bit of visual interest and to fine tune the fit, 
I'm going to use this piece of foam along the back because it's got this great diamond pattern. I can very easily now uh, make sure that it fits the back of the neck. And I'm just going to hot glue that in there. And then once we paint it, it's just going to uh, break up that, that field of, of the white plastic nicely. So I just put some more hot glue in there, a lot of hot glue in this. And now I'm going to make these uh, cheek pieces. So what I'm doing now is I'm making a frame and within this frame, I'm going to put a screen. And I think um, in the final piece, once it's painted and all glued together, it's probably gonna read as some sort of respirator uh, breathing device. So now with the styrene, you can even cut out of the center. You just kind of need to make it X to access it. And there I have my frame. So what I'm gonna do now is I have this uh, nylon screen and I'm going to place that underneath the frame. The frame I figure roughly is gonna go right there on the cheek. So now I take a piece of this screen and what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna glue this to the frame and then glue the frame and the screen to the, the face plate. So I just uh, check my fit there and um, I wanna make sure that everything is working as I imagined it. Sometimes <laughs> it wants to go in a different direction. So that's all good now. So now I have these disposable brushes because I'm, I'm painting on the super glue there so I can get a nice uh, fit without a bead. And then those brushes, you know, it's like a pack of 50 for a dollar because you can use that for about 30 seconds and then that's the end of that brush. But that worked good for what I was trying to do there. So now I just want to start to add um, some details. So on that earpiece, it's just that piece of plastic that sort of stop sign shape. And I'm just going to cut this out of very thin um, one millimeter craft foam. And what this is going to do is give just a little raised detail on uh, the plastic. And these sort of things are really nice um, once you paint it. It, it really just adds a, a, a nice level of interest. So now I want to put some knobs on here and I have these um, bottle caps that I saved because um, they're pretty interesting. They have like this knurled look to them. And once I saw those, I was like, oh, let me just put these in my bucket. Okay, so now I'm gonna just hit the whole thing with a gray primer. Um, there I'm just showing you the back where I put on some pieces. And now I, under the chin, I want to put another piece of this uh, diamond foam just so that if uh, somebody looks up or if the character's head goes up, there'll just be something there. Um, and it also is a nice, easy way um, to tie in with the back piece. And uh, later on, I'm going to put some internal ear pieces. So that gray primer is on there now because there's so much plastic. And now I'm going to hit it with the black primer which is my base. And what I did there earlier in, in fast motion is I just take a brush and sometimes there's some deep crevices that you don't hit. So now I have this sheet of acrylic of plastic. This is gonna be the visor. So um, a lot of this is gonna be on the inside of the mask, so I'm not too worried about having these ragged edges. So I just cut this out, but I don't want it to be too ragged. So I take my sanding drum and I'm just gonna smooth out these edges that I sort of roughed out with my uh, buzzsaw cutting tool. So now I'm just going to take uh, this paper off the plastic and um, <laughs> it's melted a little bit on the edges now because I cut it with it on there, but that's fine. So it didn't get dinged up. So now I gotta put that uh, bend in it to, to match the face shield. And all I'm gonna do is just take my heat gun again. Uh, you know, heat and plastic is, is sort of uh, how you do this. And I'm putting a bend in there. And this whole thing, you know, I'm eyeballing it. I'm basically roughing out where I think it is and then off camera I just uh, try and try and try again until I get the right fit. So now I just got some isopropyl alcohol there and I'm just going to make sure this is clean because now we're going to add uh, some tint to this. This is just car window tint that I got from the automotive store. It's a, a big roll is like $9 and I could probably use this five or six times. So now I'm going to carefully <laughs> place this tint on here. Now I didn't opt for the uh, tinting solution because I wasn't actually doing a car window, I was just doing this little piece, but it probably would have went a little smoother if I had that. I just used like soapy water. But 
you know, I'm always going for sort of a, a roughed up piece, so I'm never worried about making things pristine. So now with a squeegee, we're just gonna get that tint in there. And I tinted the inside on purpose because I want to do the inside and outside because just the one layer of tint is really not um, strong enough because I don't want you to be able to see at all on the inside. But there's the inside. It's a little bubbled, but that's fine. So now um, I do the outside tinting off camera. And here we have uh, the final piece that we're gonna get ready to do our paint treatment. Um, metallic, I'm gonna brush on here. A little more than a dry brush. I'm, I'm going for kind of a gunmetal look on here. So what I do is um, just put a little bit of paint on the brush and just sort of lightly dust. And you know, when you're doing this, you, you sort of end up getting a feel for it. The, the main thing you, you want to do is not put on a, a solid coat of paint. You want to just keep dusting it. All right, so now that's done, I'm going to put a coat of clear on there uh, before I weather it and attach the visor. So now I'm just going to take some hot glue and I'm going to place the visor in place. And I end up having to massage this a little. Again, for the millionth time, square peg, round hole. <laughs> but, you know, I got it in there. And that's on the inside and that's fine. So now uh, that visor really gives it some weight. So I'm going to take some brown uh, paint and some black paint, mostly brown, because when I do black pieces, I like to weather them with brown. And I'm just gonna make some <laughs> paint mud here. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take the water wash and really put a, a, a thin, coat of the brown on here. And what you do is you just wash the whole thing in this paint and then you take a paper towel and you wipe it all off. Now, some places I completely wipe it off, some places I just pat it down. And you can see here the difference between that's the treated side and that's the untreated side. Simple yet effective. So there's the, the final weathering. And yeah, that could not look any cooler. We want to seal that all in with a clear coat. And here's the final piece. And I have to admit, I do enjoy them more when it's something I totally imagined in my head. And yeah, one last look. Look at that thing. So cool. And it was really exciting to kind of just have a, a, a basic idea in my head and then sort of uh, build as I went. Now, what's interesting is when I go back and uh, look at the, the video that inspired me, although this is very different, because I'm sharing that with you, and if you take a look at it, you could definitely see the inspiration, right? So that's why I'm dubbing this character, I guess, because that is a character. Um, this is AD 82, <laughs> Atomic Dog, <laughs> released in 1982, AD 82. Really cool. And that was the first time I did the, the tinting on the visor like that. Um, Bill Duran over at Punish Props uh, shares a really cool way of, of dyeing uh, the clear plastic in a polyester dye. I'm going to try that next time. But for now, oh. Just really, really great how that came out. You know, and it's, you know, it's a little beefy. Okay, so the only thing left to do now is to fire it up. All right, here we go. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.